There's some simple ways you can get a quick look at uh, an indication of photosynthesis in your plants. And uh, the way you're going to do that is by taking advantage of some of the uh, absorption and reflective properties of light uh, in regards to uh, photosynthetic pigments. So uh, there's a few different photosynthetic pigments. Uh, most people are familiar with the chlorophyll A and B. There's also the carotenoids and uh, some other compounds. Uh, but uh, what you'll see when you're looking at a chart that's showing the absorbance spectra of these photosynthetic pig pigments, which is the wavelengths over which the molecules will absorb uh, solar radiation, when you're looking at these charts, you'll notice that uh, the lines tend to dip uh, around the, the green region of the spectrum. Uh, and that's why the plants appear green to us, is because the uh, plants of chloroplasts and the chlorophylls A, B, the carotenoids, they tend to reflect light in the green region. Uh, and you'll also notice that there's a sharp drop-off uh, around 700 nanometers, which is uh, getting just outside the region in which our eyes can, can perceive light. And uh, so we don't really see the fact that plants are actually reflecting a lot of near-red radiation, but we can use uh, cameras to pick up this near-infrared uh, near radiation, is what they call it. And uh, so a lot of cameras actually natively will detect near-infrared light, and they're built with a special uh, filter that filters out that radiation because it tends to uh, c cause the images to look unnatural to us because, like I said, our eyes don't naturally perceive that radiation when we're registering images in our brain. So... Anyways, most cameras are built with a special filter that will filter out that radiation, but you can either remove that filter or you can buy uh, uh, cameras. For instance, uh, in this case, I put together a little Raspberry Pi, uh, which is a small uh, hobby computer. The other Raspberry Pi, I bought a, a small, uh, cheap uh, camera that had uh, no infrared filter on it. And then um, I just, you know, built a little, uh, a little housing for it out of a cheap cardboard box, and uh, uh, then found a uh, used uh, uh, my own infrared filter, but a different kind of filter. Uh, this filter um, blocks out light shorter than 720 nanometers. And as you saw, uh, there's a lot of absorption by the plants in that region um, uh, that's less than 720 nanometers, but there's a, the plants tend to reflect uh, a lot um, outside of that region. And so we're picking up a lot of the reflected solar radiation, a lot of the reflected energy. And so what we should see is that the things that reflect the most in near-infrared are going to be photosynthetic pigments. Um, so it's not a direct corollary to active photosynthesis, but it uh, tends to correlate well to the presence of the photosynthetic pigments themselves. So um, you can see a lot of uh, me putting together this uh, contraption and uh, setting up the one line of code that it takes to uh, run a, a time-lapse sequence uh, with the camera. And, uh, and then we'll get a quick look at uh, a little sneak peek of what these uh, processed images look like. So you can see that uh, the pigments here are, uh, the photosynthetic pigments are highlighted in, in red and red and green so that everything that's green is uh is pretty much alive and everything that's red is is very photosynthetic um and mostly uh what's blue and purple are non-photosynthetic uh except for the fact that uh, we have a lot of radiation coming in from the sky that you can see um but other than that 
uh, it does a pretty good job of uh, indicating the uh, the areas of, of life and non-life. 